Hey, welcome back to Gas Mileage. I'm your host, Eric. And in this video, we're going to get you caught up on what's been going on with the Hellcat. And so I actually just received the Hellcat back from the dealer a few days ago. And over the past couple of months, we've been dealing with a few different issues. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and address those in this video. And so the first thing I actually want to talk to you about is I curb rashed the wheels back in November. And I want to show you kind of what you should do if you're ever in the same situation. So, you know, I was pretty heartbroken when it happened. But luckily, I was able to find someone who was able to patch it up and make it look like it never even happened. So I want to show you that. I'll show you the video of before, and then I'll show you after and what it looks like. Got a little bit of curb rash. We'll see what we can do about it. All right. And you can see it. There is no damage left. They did a great job. Can't even tell what happened. So right now, we're headed to Walmart to grab some cleaning supplies. And once we grab those, we're going to go ahead and clean the Hellcat because it's a nice day. And again, we just got the car back and it's filthy. So we want to make sure that this thing is shining because that white pearl will shine if we clean it and treat it right. So let's go ahead and do that. We're off to Walmart now. So for the sake of keeping things clear and concise, I want to talk about the dealership experiences I had this past two, three months trying to figure out what was wrong with the Hellcat. And so the first issue was I suspected oil consumption issues with the engine. And the second issue was a rotational knocking noise. And I'll go ahead and play a noise of that. I'm going to try and record the sound that is coming from the rear of the vehicle that I think is the rear. The rotational knocking noise would happen after about 30 to 40 minutes of driving. So that led me to believe that as soon as something got heated up within there, uh, it really started to cause issues. Now, when I tried to figure out what was going on with the oil consumption issue, I took it to dealership A. Dealership A was an absolute nightmare. And if you're in the Northern Virginia area, please do reach out to me if you have a Mopar vehicle and you are getting a service by these local dealerships, because I'll tell you exactly who you should never trust with your vehicle. I took it there to figure out what was going on with the oil consumption issue. As soon as they got the vehicle, they called me back two and a half hours later saying I had to come pick it back up. There's an oil catch can on the vehicle and they can't service it. I said, hey, I've got the stock parts. Can I just bring them back to you and you guys swap them out and start with the test? And they said, no, we're not going to do that for you. And so right off the bat, I felt a little bit um, weary about taking my car to them because they're not even willing to help me out with something as simple as that. But no big deal. I'll go pick the car up. I'll drive it home and I'll swap the part back out myself. Now, when I took the car home and I opened up the hood, what I found was actually quite horrifying. And I'll show you a little video clip of that right now. I just popped the hood. So here's where the screws go. And so as you can see, the air intake box screws were completely removed and sitting in the engine bay. And this is how they gave me the vehicle back. It's not how I gave it to them. And so what I find very problematic is that they called me and said that, hey, we can't work on your vehicle. Now, when you open the hood, you can see the catch can right away. There's no hiding it. And so they knew right off the bat that they weren't going to be able to perform the test that I was asking them to perform. So why do they start taking things apart that, in my opinion, aren't even relevant to the actual issue in diagnosing what's going on? That right there is trust shot number one. I can't trust them after that and let alone getting my car back with screws missing in the engine bay, like that's just not cool. And so that's dealership A. I decided I was never gonna go back to dealership A again. I was gonna take it to dealership B and see how service was there. So about 15, 20 miles away, I take the Hellcat to perform the oil consumption test. Everything's good and going great. They say that here, drive it for 2,000 miles, bring it back and we'll see where we're at. So I drove it for 2,000 miles and then I brought it back and I also made them aware of a rotational knocking noise. That noise turned out to be the drive shaft, but dealership B did not diagnose that issue properly. They replaced the rear differential thinking that was the issue. They called me up, said, hey, come get your car back. We fixed everything. It's ready to go. I pick it up, 30 minutes home, 35 minutes home. 
uh, I hear the noise again and it kind of just shot me in the soul. I was like, damn, you know, I just had my car gone for a week and a half and the issue's still not resolved. And so at this point I'm considering, do I take it back to dealership B, let them know that they replaced the diff and they didn't do the right thing? No, I decided I'm going to take it to a different place that's going to actually go through the process of diagnosing the issue properly. So we go to dealership C, even further away, about 50 to 60 miles away from my home. But at the end of the day, if that's what it takes to get its service, I'm willing to make that drive. I took it to dealership C, and right from the get-go, dealership C was absolutely phenomenal. The service advisor checked up with me on a daily basis near about. It was just a whole entire different experience that I've honestly never received, or received before from a dealer. And that's kind of scary to think that you can spend all this money on a car and you can go find a dealership that really doesn't give a crap about you or your vehicle. They're just trying to make the buck themselves. And so a lot of service advisors I've heard, you know, they're compensated for the work that they sell their customers. And so I'm not interested in being upsold something I don't need. I'm not interested in going into a dealership and hearing every time, oh, your brakes are shot, let's replace those. Or your tires are burnt out, we need to replace those. It's like, I, I know what's going on with the vehicle. I've got brakes at home, I'm waiting to replace them myself. To find a dealership that actually treats you with respect and actually gets the problem solved is phenomenal. And so when the car was at dealership B, they gave me the vehicle back and on the service advisor notes, they mentioned that they had found a small misfire in the engine. Now, they did not bring this up to me on the phone at all. Otherwise, I would have said, hey, keep the car, figure out what's going on with it. I don't want to take it back if there's a misfire in the uh, one of the cylinders. And so that rubbed me the wrong way. And that's ultimately why I did decide not to go back there. It's like they already gave me a free rear differential under powertrain. That wasn't the issue, but they're diagnosing things wrong and ultimately just not making me feel like they're addressing the situation comfortably. And so I took it to dealership C. Dealership C was so much better to deal with and they actually found out what was causing the misfire in the cylinder and they replaced the water pump. There were spark plugs that were corroded. I mean, all in all, if you're looking to buy a used Hellcat, you need to take it to a reputable dealer before you ever take that thing off the lot because you know there can be some hidden issues with some of these vehicles that you really just don't know of. And I have not abused this car by any means necessary, so I'm not sure why spark plugs got corroded. Maybe you guys can offer some insight as to why that could have happened, but you know, all in all, dealership C got me right. The car feels better than ever. Sure, it took about two weeks again, but we've got a brand new drive shaft on the vehicle. That in a nutshell is how the dealership experience went. And now I want to go ahead and take you guys inside Walmart and get some of these cleaning supplies so we can get the cat all cleaned up. Let's see here, we need some wheel cleaner. Go ahead and get a fresh sponge too. So when it comes to driving a Hellcat, there's gonna be two distinct points in your life. When you get fresh tires, and when your tires are pretty much ready to go. And right now, these tires are ready to go. They've been on way longer than they probably should have, but we're gonna go ahead and send them off in good fashion. been pulled over in this vehicle so far was right here on this road well this is where I committed the, the fence now the only thing I was written for was no front plate but I just gassed it under this bridge like I'm about to do right now and little did I know I would do that right in front of a cop and he came pulling up on me but luckily he might have been a uh, Hellcat fan because he only wrote me for a no front plate and so in my opinion not having a front plate on your vehicle is a good idea because it gives great cops a chance to cut you a break. Last thing you wanna do is have them say, oh, I'm giving you a break, I'm gonna write you for not reckless, we're just gonna bump it down to 79 and a 55. I'd rather them write me for no front plate, if I'm being honest. Those of you who have never done this before and you do have the ability and the power to do this, if you are in a Hellcat, what you need to do is you need to put your, uh, your car into track mode and you need to hold down the traction button for about five seconds until everything turns off.
see when we get to the washer. Not a lot of rubber left. Front's obviously have a little bit more. Filthy. guess that the amount paid today will be uh, 43.17. Stay tuned. <laughs> 